All right, we are back for another episode of painting the legions of the Horus Heresy without an airbrush. And today we're painting the word bearers. And I will be very upfront with this. I am not entirely sure how to achieve the word bearer paint scheme, color scheme with contrast paint. So we're just gonna give it a whirl and whatever happens, happens. So I'm gonna start with Flesh Terror Red. Um, I think this is gonna be the way to do it. Flesh Terror Red with Druki Violet over it, or really any purple wash. Druki Violet is just the purple wash I happen to have on hand. Uh, but I don't know, like I said, I've never painted one before. I thought maybe I, I thought briefly about doing a test model, but to be honest, then if the test model went wrong, I'd have to come up with a new way to attempt it, and then I'd have to test that. So this is just going to be our test model. Uh, I have no plans to paint a word bearer army anytime in the future. Who knows, maybe one day, but not right now. Um, so if this test goes horribly wrong, yes, it will be immortalized on YouTube. But you know, if it gets a million downvotes, it's still a million channel interactions, I'll take it. So I'm just going to coat this guy completely in Flesh Terror Red. Uh, I'm going to not cover the uh, bolter or the shoulder pads. And yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I guess I'm probably not this part in the middle. I'll probably do that part black as well. But everything else is going to be covered in this. So yeah, I will do this. Uh, the black will technically cover over this red if we needed to, but probably would take a couple layers and it won't cover the best. So I'm going to do my best to avoid the shoulder pads where at all possible. And same with the uh, with the backpack bits. Um, and then once I have this all done, I'll come back. Well, I'll let it dry completely because the next step will be to put the purple wash over the top of it. Alright, we are back and our red is nice and dry. And now we're going to use some Druki Violet and just put it all over the red. And like I said in the beginning, I've never done this, so I don't know if it's going to look good, but that's what we're going with. Uh, I didn't specifically pick Druki Violet, also, you could go with a different color of purple wash. Uh, this is just the one I happen to have, so that's what I decided to go with. Just applying this all over this red. And hopefully it's going to dull it and darken it just enough that it looks like the word bearer color. Um, I first thought about um, doing just null oil over this red, but if you look at the word bearer's color, it's not just that it's dark red, it's sort of leaning towards maroon. Um, and so I figured a purple would probably be a better idea. Um, and we may end up even doing a second coat of this, but for now, it's much brighter on camera than it is in real life. Um, so right now it looks, on camera, looking at it, it looks like it hardly did anything. But in real life, it looks a lot darker and does really kind of look like the word bearer's color. But in any event, I will let this dry and then we will come back and do the black. Alrighty, we are back again. And now we're going to do the black. And for this, I'm gonna use Black Legion. Uh, you could use Black Templar here. Probably make very little difference. Uh, I'm just using Black Legion because it's new and I'm still just trying to get a feel for all the new contrast paints. So I'm gonna do the bolter here. A little bit too much water on my brush. As you can see, I applied more like Null Oil than uh, Black Legion. I just forgot to dry my brush off after dipping it in the water. Also gonna have to look up. Oh, I didn't paint the guy's thumb. I'll paint that between between clips here. Um, I'm gonna have to look up what color 
Word Bear's eyes are, I think, typically they're shown with black, or not black eyes, sorry, painting black, uh, green eyes, but I'll have to look. Alright, I'm also going to get both shoulder pads with this black legion. So for this one, because it's so smooth, I like to get my brush wet again. Uh, not as wet as that first time though. Uh, and that just helps the paint flow on the surface a little bit better. And uh, not create too many tide marks or little, like scrunched up little spots of uh, patchy. That's what I'm looking for, patchy paint. Um, it's sort of just something you have to accept when you paint with contrast paint. There's always going to be a little bit of patchiness or streakiness or something like that. Um, it's just, you know, there's drawbacks and positives to every style of painting. And uh, this is just one of them for contrast paint. And I've come to terms with it that, you know, some of my miniatures will just look a little patchy or streaky. But the speed at which it allows me to paint... I think it's a it's a fine uh, trade-off and of course you know there's people who can paint with contrast paint um, and have no issues uh, and they just you know they go a little bit slower they thin the paint a little bit more and it works just fine but my style of painting this will work for me no problem at all so I'm gonna let this dry and then I will do some research on the eye color, and then we'll come back and do the metallics. All right, we're back, and we're going to move on to the silver. For that, we're going to use Iron Hand Steel. And my research was successful in confirming that green eyes are often painted on board bearers, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's find the correct paintbrush here, though. All right, so we're gonna start with the bolter here. I'm gonna get the bear bolt. No bayonet on this guy. Uh, however, if you put a bayonet on your guys and you wanna know how to paint them easily. Oh, I still haven't painted that guy's thumb. All right, uh, if you do the straight bayonet, the regular bayonet, then I would paint the body of the bayonet silver. Leave the attachment point black or whatever color the body of your bolter is, in this case black. Uh, and then paint the little, there's a little circle on the bayonet right here. Paint that silver, and you're good to go. If you have the chain bayonet, leave the body of the bayonet the color of your bolter, in this case black. Paint the teeth of the bolter, or of the uh, bayonet in silver, and then paint the little attachment part also in silver. And there you go. That's how you paint bayonets. Uh, I don't have one on this guy. I just picked random marines for uh, to do this series with. So some of them have bayonets, some of them don't. And they're gonna go in. Uh, they're gonna all go in a nice display case together. So then I'm gonna. Oh, I didn't black this in. Usually I do that. That's all right. We're just gonna paint the whole thing silver. And then we'll, uh, we'll null, oil, null oil it later. But yeah, usually I black that in so that uh, you get the real deep black color in between these chevrons. But not a, not a huge deal, not the end of the world. So then I'm going to do... I wonder... I'm going to do those in gold, actually. But I am going to do these exhausts or intakes or whatever they are. I think every episode I say uh, I really should look up the anatomy of a space marine armor, suit of armor, and I never do. But whatever these are, they're going to be silver. Same with these little conduits here. Here, 
And then we're going to paint the six rivets. Um, if you don't know what the six rivets are, I've explained it in almost every video, I think. But basically, there's a bunch of rivets on these guys' backpacks. And in painting an army, I don't feel like painting that many rivets. I did the math on it once. Let's see. There's six up here. And then 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 rivets. So, 24 rivets. If you're painting a squad of 10, that's 240 rivets. And you have to take two compulsory troops in the Horse Heresy. So we'll say you take the tacticals both times. That's 480 rivets. Then maybe you take a support squad. That's uh, 720 rivets. And then maybe you take a, uh, a veteran squad. Just a five man. Nothing crazy. Just five veterans. Uh, so that'll get you up to 840 rivets. Now, maybe you want to spend your time painting 840 rivets because you really want your guys to look good on the table more power to you man or lady i'm not going to judge but for me i don't want to paint that many rivets so i just paint the six up top that everyone's gonna see and uh and call it there and speaking of calling it there we will call the silver there i'm gonna come back once this dries uh, and paint the gold and then I'm also gonna pick a color to paint these joints maybe a brown I'm not sure yet but either way we'll be right back with the gold alrighty we're back and we're gonna use some peridot or peridot alchemy from scale 75 for our gold on this guy um, the equivalent for Citadel I believe is Griffon is it called Griffon Gold or something like that? Sorry, I cannot remember. But there is an equivalent to this in the GW paint range. Just have to look around at the gold and figure out what it is because I've forgotten. So I'm just going to paint in these, whatever these are. I really am. I really am tempted to just call them armor bobas because that's kind of what they remind me of. But I don't know what they're actually called. Studs, I think I called them studs at one point because like studded leather armor sort of reminds me of that. But I think we'll go with armor, armor bobas. That's what they'll be. And I'm also going to paint this. All right, we are back after getting cut off by the camera deciding it was done. Uh, and we're going to go on to Gorgrunt of Fur. And this is just going to be for the armor joints. And then this will be the last color before we add any um, washes. That's the word I'm trying to think of. Uh, and actually, no, it won't be the last color because we have to do the eyes. Um, while the camera was relaxing, uh, I added some white to the eyes. You guys have seen white painted into eyes plenty of times. I figured I didn't need to do that on camera. Um, but we're going to put some contrast paint over that in just a second. There's the, there's the armor joints, easy enough. And then we're gonna take some Mantis Warriors Green, which I haven't used a whole lot since it came out. It's one of the newer contrast paints. Just make sure my brush is nice and pointy. And then we're just gonna put this right over the white. Just like that. There we go, we've got our, our nice green eyes. If the camera will focus. There we go. Alright, so now I'm just going to let everything dry. I'm going to paint that thumb, I promise. And then we'll come back, add a, probably a coat of Null Oil to a couple places, and we'll call him done. Alright, we are back and we are ready for some Null Oil. This is just going to go on the black, the silver, the gold. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. The black, the silver, the gold. So we'll start with the bolter here. I'm just going to coat the whole thing. Easy peasy. Same with this down here. Uh, and this is the new formulation of Null Oil, if you are curious, if you want to copy it exactly. Um, said this in the last video, I think, but I do have a couple of bottles of the old formulation still, uh, and I will be telling you in the video 
depending on which one I use. Just in case, I haven't noticed a huge difference, but if you guys have done some experimenting and noticed the difference that you want to make sure to draw attention to, then I'll just let you know which one I'm using. More often than not, it will be the new formulation just because I want to hang on to the old formulation. I'm not sure exactly why. I just feel like I want to hang on to it. Just in case, you know. So I'm just going to get that on here. I did this already. I'm going to put some on the armor joints here just to darken them down a little bit more. And I'm going to put a little bit of this in these right there. Oh, and on his face in there. All right. So I will put him on his base. Uh, and then right about now, you should be seeing some pictures of him on it. The same simple base scheme that all these guys are in. So yeah, uh, I think it worked out pretty well. Hopefully the pictures will show the dark red armor more than the video does. If not, you'll just have to take my word for it. I promise I'm not lying to you. Uh, but in any event, thank you all for watching. If you like the video, feel free to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one.